Hey YouTube, in the shop today, we're actually in a shop. Not in my uh, home makeshift bike shop, but we're at South Lake Bikes. I'm employing Brett of South Lake Bikes to help me out since I don't own a hydraulic brake bikes. And there were some requests on, hey, how do you adjust? How do you bleed? What's the maintenance of hydraulic brakes? So Brett Schaefer of South Lake Bikes is here to help me out. So what do we, what do we have here today, Brett? Uh, today we are going to be ble um, bleeding some hydraulic brakes. So we have a couple of different setups on how to do this. Um, just want to show a little bit of the difference in what you're working with, um, with different brands. Um, so before we start, I just want to let everybody know it's very important to get um, the proper fluid for the brake system that you're working on. Um, different brakes take different fluids, so you're going to want to make sure that you get the proper fluid for the brake that you have. If you're unsure about this at all, contact somebody at your local bike shop, contact the manufacturer, look it up online. It's crucial that you get the right one. Um, Shimano requires just standard mineral oil. Um, it, it's very um, gentle on their softer O-rings on the inside, so it doesn't corrode and uh, get caustic on the inside. Um, Avid actually uses a DOT or DOT 5.1 brake fluid. Um, you can get this actually at an automotive store if you'd like, but um, they do sell it in convenient little pint size um, containers here. Um, and then Royal Blood is the one that we're going to be using today. It's for the Magura brakes. Um, they take a special bleed kit um, for the attachments and the barbs on the end of the lines, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, and that's the one we're going to be using today. Not sure exactly what's inside of it. It's a very thick, almost oily um, fluid, but it works fantastic. So show me the components of a hydraulic brake system. Right, so you've got three main components. You've got the line, you've got the caliper, sorry, the caliper at the bottom, um, squeezes the discs. Basically it's a plunger with two pads that, that squeeze back and forth. On the rear one, I'll show you real quick. Um, you squeeze it, the pads go together, stop the brake. The line transferring the fluid. This is probably where your air buildup is gonna be. Um, so that's gonna be the requirement to bleed the lines it's because there's air in the line here. And then you've got a reservoir or the lever. Um, it's got all of your fluid inside of it and a plunger. As you squeeze the brake lever, plunger pushes the fluid through the line to the brake pads. So to start off, we've removed the front wheel. This is important actually. You can bleed a brake with the front wheel on. I do not recommend it. If you get the oil um, or your your brake fluid on the rotor, it can actually contaminate the pad in the rotor and that's when you get those squeaky brakes that never seem to go away. Um, so I always recommend remove the wheel and insert your spacer um, to simulate having a disc in the middle of your caliper. Um, so when you do squeeze the lever, you're not extend extending those plungers too far, which can actually damage the brake itself as well. So we've removed the wheel. We've placed our disc inside. The, the first step is going to be connecting the bleed kit to the um, brake system itself. It comes in two pieces. They come in syringes in the kit that, you, that are supplied by the manufacturer, and they have a barb on them that actually inserts directly into a port on the caliper and then one here on the lever. Um, you always bleed fluid from low to high as the air is going to want to travel up and float. So you're going to want to bleed the air from the bottom to the top. If your bike is upside down, you'll want to reverse that. You want the air to always flow upward. Some manufacturers do have designs um, specific to a certain brake where you'd want to go from lever to caliper or from caliper to lever regardless. But in this case, we're going to be going from bottom to top. What we're gonna start doing is pushing the fluid through the syringe, through the caliper, up the brake line, and it should come back out into this reservoir caliper, or this reservoir syringe here. You'll see at first a little bit of air coming out. That's the air that we're getting out of the line. And after that, you'll see clear blue fluid. And when the clear blue fluid is steady with no interrupted air bubbles, that's when you know you're done bleeding. At that point, you can stop, close everything back up, clean up, and you're done. So now that we've bled the brakes, all the fluid is out of the lines, they're engaging really well. However, the brake lever still engages late. You gotta pull it too far, especially if you're pulling with one finger, it's gonna hit your knuckle. You want that to engage a lot quicker. On the other side, 
that's about where we want it. This is the setup that we're looking for. On these brakes, very modern, very easy to adjust. Some of the older brakes are a little more primitive, not so easy. This one actually just has a contact point right here that we're just going to screw in probably about two turns to bring the lever outward. And now it connects much, much nicer. So the last step in setting up the hydraulic brakes is gonna be centering the pads. Um, ours right now is rubbing on one side, on the caliper side, on the left side. And what we're gonna do is center it, adjust it, and make sure that as it spins, we're not getting any disc rub on the pads. So we're rubbing on the left side pad on our wheel. It's not freely spinning. The last step is just to center the caliper to the disc. The disc is fixed the caliper can move back and forth on the mounting bolts. So all we're going to do is loosen the mounting bolts. Disc brakes inherently push from both sides with both pads evenly. So if we squeeze the caliper or squeeze the lever, it'll actually center itself. Hopefully all we'll have to do is tighten it back down and we'll be finished. We're still getting just a, a slight rub on the inside. So what we're gonna do is manually push the top over a little bit, just a touch, with a little bit of thumb pressure to alleviate the rub from that pad. Try it again. Might have to try two or three times, but once you're done, it's, it spins like a top. So as you can see, hydraulic brakes are nothing to be afraid of. If you've got the proper tools, the proper liquid, and just a little bit of know-how and a little bit of patience, you should be able to set them up just fine. Technology's come a long way, they're very easy to set up, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local bike shop, myself, or WinVu. We'd be more than happy to help you out. So thanks, Brett, for helping us out here with disc brakes. Subscribe below, and stay tuned for more maintenance and tutorial tips. Thanks. Thanks, guys. This is K-Squared Cycling, keep the grams down and the watts up.